give it up for Dr. J. Sutze. Well, hello everybody. My name is Dr. J, and I'm actually a pediatrician from Connecticut. <laughs> everybody knows who the pediatrician is. Baby doctor, shop giver, right? We don't just take care of babies, though. Actually, we'll take care of kids from their newborn period all the way until college graduation or first felony arrest. <laughs> And I'll get this out of the way. You guys are probably scratching your head wondering why a pediatrician from Connecticut would drive two hours to Boston to be in a comedy contest. <laughs> Easy explanation for that, of course. It's the Obamacare. <laughs> Pretty sure Trump health isn't going to be any better. But uh, if you read the Affordable Care Act, there is actually a paragraph in there that recommends, it doesn't require, but does recommend pediatricians find a second job by 2017. <laughs> It's not all bad, though. They set me up with one of those second career counselors. She gave me a couple of tests, and this is what we fucking came up with. <laughs> we have uh, parents in the crowd, moms, dads, you out there in the crowd? Good. I was drinking away from the kids the way God intended things. <laughs> and give it up for the moms. Being a mom, hardest job in the world, being a mom. Hardest job in the world. But the easiest job to get. Uh, <laughs> Andrew usually drunk for the interview. I'm just saying. Uh, I never realized how much of my day job as a pediatrician is dependent on the consumption of alcohol at night. <laughs> Drink up, people. We got car payments too. So. So I've been doing uh, comedy for about ten years now, and it's great because I've gotten to meet and work with some of the uh, great comedians, top level comedians tour in the country. In fact, I've gotten to write for a couple of them. Prescriptions, mostly. <laughs> Boner pills, primarily. A lot of lint thick comics were in this great country of ours. But, uh, but uh, you know, it's interesting. They say the baby inside mom's pregnant belly can actually hear the sound of the parent's voice the last trimester. The last three to four months, the baby is listening in inside mom's belly. And as a pediatrician who eventually meets the family, it always makes me wonder if some of those kids that are born with the cord wrapped around their neck a couple of times <laughs> aren't actually failed at your suicide attempts. I have to deal with their parents, and some of them have no idea what I can actually do for their kid as the doctor, you know? I had a dad come in the other day with his 13-year-old daughter. Nine o'clock in the morning, I take her temperature, it's 103 degrees, and dad says to me, Doc, you gotta have her better by three this afternoon. She's got travel across triads. <laughs> and I said, you see my diploma on the wall there? It says University of Connecticut School of Medicine. Not Hogwarts School of fucking Wizardry. <laughs> and you knew I was a bubble pediatrician when you hired me. Uh, I do like the job, though. The kids are great because they're a good source of comedy material. Uh, had a 13-year-old boy in the other day for his checkup, and uh, uh, I asked the kids at that age if they have any questions uh, that they want to ask them privately without the parent in the room. And this 13-year-old boy said, yeah, I got a question. So his dad went out to the waiting room and I said, what's your question? What do you got? He goes, uh, I don't know what happened last night, but I think I broke my penis. <laughs> I said, broke your penis? What are you talking about? He goes, I don't know. I woke up this morning. There was glue all over the place. <laughs> and you got to stop pumping your bottle airplanes. <laughs> I had another kid, seven-year-old kid, came in for his checkup, and I opened up the door to the exam room, and he's got this pissed-off look on his face already. And I said, buddy, what's wrong? He goes, I don't want to be sitting on a table in my underwear. <laughs> I said, well, get used to it. You're seven. You're at the doctor's office. you got to do it. I, I go to my doctor. i got to sit at the table with my underwear. Your mom, too. He goes, my mom doesn't wear underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and that will wake you the fuck up at 2.15 on Tuesday afternoon. Now. It's always a little awkward. Maybe, maybe not as awkward as this time when the mom decided she needed to explain to me why she didn't find underwear comfortable. So we've been dating for about a month. That's my time. Thanks, I'm back with that. Thanks for going, ladies and gentlemen.